with Mike and Roger DeRussia, and we're going to be talking about ice boating. Mike, Roger, thanks a lot for coming to the show. You're welcome. Okay, you. good to be here. That's good. That sounds good. Behind us, we have uh, the boat that Mike and Roger own, uh, the debutante, originally from Oshkosh, and uh, these two guys are from Menominee, Michigan, and they brought the boat down here to do a little sailing. Can you guys tell us a little bit about the boat when you bought it, Roger? Uh, yeah, the boat was originally built in 1913 in Poughkeepsie, New York, and uh, to the account of Van Dyke out of uh, Oshkosh here, and it was sailed by uh, John Buckstaff for many years, and the Buckstaff family... Uh, uh, I guess was too active in the business and all, and uh, there was a resurgence of interest uh, brought about by many Buddy Malgus in Lake Geneva in the early 60s. So I got enthusiastic and I was able to buy the uh, boat from John and Clyde, and then we rebuilt it. That was 1963, uh, the year Kennedy was shot. Uh, we kind of refurbished it and all, and then uh, over the years have modified it to uh, uh, so that it could take the power of the Dacron sail. We made the sail smaller and all. And okay. Now, you said before that you did make the uh, sail a little bit smaller. Mike, can you tell us, like, how many uh, feet of sail you have in a boat like that? Uh, I, I think there's 550 square feet in her right now. Uh, uh, when he, and originally, it was 650, if I'm not sure. Okay. And uh, that's enough sail area to, to go take as fast as you want to go. Yeah. Well, I know in the Guinness Book of World Record they had in 1938, uh, Buckstaff was, was with the boat and it went about 100 and, they said 143 miles an hour with about a 70 mile an hour wind. And uh, now these two guys right here are both national champs. Uh, Mike, uh, can you tell us a little, little bit about some of the racing you do? Well, uh, I, I won the championships in the Renegade One Design class. Uh, uh, it's a one design boat, all the same type of craft. They're 24 feet long. Uh, I started sailing when I was 16 years old, and I was real lucky uh, uh, when I was 25. Uh, from all the knowledge and experience I learned from my dad here, that I uh, took the championship home one year. He he broke down that regatta, so I was I was kind of lucky. Well, that's and that's not. I don't think it's luck. I think it's skill from the family. Roger, now you also were a national champion. Could you tell us what? Well, you uh, yeah, uh, <coughs> I was national champion last year. My son beat me by quite a few years, so I think he's got the story mixed up. I learned from him. Okay. But last year we won over on uh, Lake Pepin, uh, which is uh, just south of Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Mississippi River. Okay, how long is the mast, Mike? You should, you should have our, you should have our tape measure with us, Mike. But the mast is approximately. 40, 44 feet. And the backbone? The backbone is about the same as the mast. It's, it's right around 40, 48 feet. The plank is 32 feet. And what are these guys doing to it now? Okay, what these, what these uh, employees of Marinette Marine are doing here, they've just added approximately 18 feet of new wood in on the side of the uh, backbone. We're looking at the stern of the hull here right now, the transom looking forward. Hey, long? Uh, 32 foot overall plank, so I'm figuring if she's probably got about a 31, or no, probably a 30 and a half, uh, 30 feet, 6 inch uh, track from the nose. Uh, the main sail is about 40 feet, and when we're under pressure, it stretches about two and a half to three feet. Uh, so that probably gives us an effective look about 43 feet. The mast itself uh, is about 44, uh, uh, 45 feet long. And the top of it's about 48 feet off the ice to the end. Could you give us a real basic description of the runners that you have laying on the floor over here? Uh, I don't know the history of them, but... Uh, how they're uh, being used now. Well, the these, 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 these logs are runners here. Uh, I'm a metal worker. And these are works of art. I just took them out of the shop and they're working on them. They're all Uh, these runners don't have to be extraordinarily sharp, they're just uh, 
to go with a slush, and the slush will actually be really full. Um, it's got a real nice run out of my, I just love that runner, but as far as racing and hard ice stuff, for that. So they're very rarely used. on the bottom were probably her original uh, aluminum skates. So they, they call them Durell. That's what aluminum was. Dura aluminum alloy, and they call them Durell. And it's probably a machine out of a cast billet, would be my guess. And then these have inserts in them. I, uh, the inserts were all worn down to the rivet, so uh, when I got the boat, I, I, I uh, Basic 44 steel insert and had them hardened in a, in a broach boundary and then we re riveted them. I'm just looking at them now, I'm a little disappointed that the, uh, I don't know, they weren't worth about 40 were, but some of these runners didn't start too well in storage. Now these I made. And uh, the reason I made them is most of the rails were not a good runner, they cut in too much. These runners here, the one guy's using all the time, but here's too short the ball that just sit there and stop. Okay, well, I'll move this way, but the Brazini kind of anything on the ice, these are, are not a hard runner, and they just kill it all the way. Well, the evolution was that this runner is a plate runner that will go through small pair of these things. I put one wing on uh, a wing on one side and stiffen it up while it from one side. You notice that the scheme is a lot thinner than this one and also much longer. I've got a much very long ride on it. It's easily sharpened on the jig to the jig here. And uh, these are the best skates that these skates that I'm using all the time. Uh, I've never sailed as well as she does on these skates. Running a 45, 49, 45. Uh, the wind you have over here, that's the wind you have. Uh, um, the wind you have over here, that's the wind you have. I overhauled that when I got the wind. I put new wash in here so that it would change the curation slightly, simply because I wanted to get in the wind. I think it's a little longer to get in, a little longer to get it off, but uh, we're using it fairly tight. Uh, just a general comment on sailing the boat. Uh, you know, the new jack rod, but when I got the boat, the boat was 20, that's the one with all the holes in there, that was 25 feet long. I also had the original boat, I don't know what happened to that, that was a hollow round. It was the old round one. Right, yeah. and, uh, it had the bales on it. Uh, and also, also had the uh, displaced cables distributing the load, and so it had a, a brass track. And uh, I went to the new one, and I shot five feet off of it. I shot the foot and made five feet, and I raised the mast back about three feet more than what it was. What well, was the mast vertical or vertical? So fairly, uh, fairly close to vertical. Yeah, Improve the performance of the boat, or? Well, I think so. I had more problems when I got the boat than I knew what to do with it. As an example, uh, the old halyards were connected to very long uh, full turnbuckles, so the last fetching up of the halyard was on low. So I basically reconditioned everything the way it was, and I started off for sale, you know, and uh, we didn't have any way of, of, of uh, controlling that mast at all. There was no head stay on it. So we break that winch down and the mass is take it set. Uh, and we come about the mass and stay right there. Uh, I mean, it was kind of obvious. So the first thing we did is we got rid of, we got rid of the two big ship. I made the smaller so I could have room to get a new head stay in here. So this head, head fitting is all new. And then I made this, this fitting here. The, the mass, when I got the boat, had Cracks totally about three times in the way. Uh, it's always possible. We're putting silver down. Steel numbers where the hell you're going. Cracks all the way down. They all pour together. You can't go away. And, uh, but this is the ball lock. That still didn't do the job. 
And I can tell you from personal experience, I'm glad that I have these on because with the, with the background, uh, anything over 15 miles an hour on, on good ice, uh, you just you know how to keep your face on. I often wish that when I really learn how to sail this thing, I never think I, 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 I just don't think I ever did learn how to sail. And I'm wondering if anybody who sails these things long enough to really learn how to sail. They're always repairing. They're always waiting for ice and always repairing. But when you do sail up, uh, the 32 feet of plank is 8 and 8 inches, 8 and 1 eighth inches thick in the middle, and then it's of course tapered foot back, about 27 inches wide. And that's the heaviest thing on the boat. It's the first thing I off boat and I, the back boat here you can see is the tongue for the trailer. And we got a fitting here, here it is right here. It fits right through the uh, tiller post and that uh, we use that controller thing. Uh, the whole thing together, and you would swear to the Jesus that 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 plank, that this thing would ride like a. You get this thing going, and you can run it. I don't. Know, you run it a any kind of an ice plank, this skate will go over, and the ice just won't. You don't even feel it. Uh, the power is just when you get this thing rolling, it just on and the acceleration. Um, I, I felt more acceleration here than I have a jet going down the road. Now that, that's not a fighter jet, but a commercial. I don't know how many G's they have. And I do know also that I, when I spin out, it's more than one G. Oh, yes. Because oh, yes. I can't I, uh, I can't stay in the thing. I try to stay in it every which way I know how. One time I couldn't back your thing, and I spin out on no G bottles. And I always look back at the boat for Bob, and this time Bob wasn't, wasn't to be followed. So, Lord, I told him, it's a pretty good Then I noticed he was on the other side of the boat, he still had the winch in his hand, and he went out with the winch. He pulled the winch right off, the screws right off the back. Yeah, this boat was built, what, 1913? Well, I have a picture, uh, a very long picture, and all the boats are kept. You want to see that before you go? Sure. This one's from Charlie Miller. Yeah, uh, yeah, Charlie yeah. Miller. Okay, yeah. and he told me that was uh, taken 1913. That's when it came to Madison. Yeah, yeah. at Far Rock Point. So, and, uh, so uh, as I understand, she predates that by two years, but I could be wrong. 1911. And it was built by the, what, the Buckholz brothers out in New York. You know, I often heard that, and I doubted that. Is that, you know, that's not a, uh, that's a common name today. Oh, it is. Yeah. I mean, I still hear that name on the Audi circles out there on the same thing. They were supposedly the people that took the lot of the Uh So you've owned the boat probably, what, since 1960? 62. Well, I can't believe it's 27 years. Yeah. Or 28 years. Going on 30. I, 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 the last thing I've done on the boat here was on the mast. Um, I was a pretty metal fitting right here. You can still see the make on the floor. But there was a cable that went through this all the way. And uh, then it originally spliced here, but then eventually something happened. It was cable plant. Well, I really didn't like that. The way I was running the boat and everything, I really got pretty nervous. And uh, the other thing is, remember the three, three times the length? Oh, yes. That's some cracks and all, so you, you got to understand what I'm trying to do with the people with here. So I fashioned this thing in the more conventional way, the way things that are done today. And, uh, Extraordinarily well, and wherever possible, I tried to, you know, some of the stuff is just, look at this. They've done the original art. Yeah, you know, I mean, who, who the hell works? You know, it works, so why not? And, uh, and this thing here, it looks like a kind of a bastard thing here, but this, with the ball lock, I couldn't go to an internal failure. I thought about it, but I didn't know how the hell I would get inside the mast, and I didn't build it, you know, a lot before me. So all this is is a crude way of trying to hook the halyard so that it's not slapping all over the mask. No, it's the halyard right there. Okay, in other words, this is, uh, this is where we lift it up. We, uh, we put tin foil up uh, on the boat. We'll show you a fitting on the, on the, uh, the back boat. But we lift it up here with flap and tackle. And then uh, with all the shrouds on there, we literally set it right down on this mast step. Hook it all up and then very carefully. Drop the gym. 
never do it right. We always get the cable wrong. Isn't that true? Always well, better believe we it. We always get over the floor stand. Oh, yeah. get it, yeah, it's always the wrong place or whatever. Have you ever weighed any of the parts? Yeah. I'm glad you asked that. I think I had to do that. I did. I weighed mine last year. So. We got the biggest this effort, and uh, I think uh, with these highway, portable highway scales now, it shouldn't be too hard. Is that nope. true or no? It's very easy to do. That's where we weighed ours. Well, where did you get them? Well, the scales you can bought. Anybody's got them. Yeah, I got mine from Mercury Marine. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you. here is that we horse all this down to get it nice and tight so there are lines tied in here and loops on hand you stand it down your feet that's the idea behind yeah, this plate and uh, I've been into this twice I see she's turning uh, uh, but I'm not worried about it anymore. I mean I know it's I know it's in there it's just a little paper little carols uh, this this is a I also this was the original uh, next slide I said three feet I'm wrong it feels like three feet yeah. Well, wait a minute. It is because it's the, the tack is up there, and I got to horse it down. You stretch her all the way. Put it the roof, right? Okay. So, what we do on occasion, but I never really learned how to do it, was that we could use the main sitting into the wind. We could use the main sheet to downhaul this mother all the way down here, and then put this bolt in it uh, above the, the gooseneck slide, so we can pull pull it wrap forward or after. dead now, but he was a hell of a guy. Um, uh, originally, originally, she had a round nose on her up here that had spliced cables that went over the edge yeah, of the turnbuckles. And this got so cozy up here, I was afraid that I was losing part of the, the backbone, so I fashioned this hole right here. I got it. That is just hole. <laughs> I got some areas on mine. Yeah. I've never noticed that before. Uh, this is for the head stay now, which uh, I've added. And this whole fitting here is for the three A smart wheel struts to come down um, over two struts back up to the back wall just to have the top of the plane right machine needs it. This is uh, but I'd say the back wall should be about that deep. So it's not just so Okay, this thing is a little bit moved here because uh, this thing's out a long way from the trailer and anytime I go down or over anything, I always catch it that something. I'll get a little sweater, I'll get a smash it back on as it go up. But with this design here, you know, there's a, this is another, the, the big Martindale sweater that you can see sitting there. This was, I always thought it was three quarters, it looks like it's five eighths. Yeah, three. Three of them. And uh, the scribe way of putting them in is you just tighten them up and then jump them in. I mean, I just, 
from there. Really. I just adore this stuff. This yeah. is a hollow cleat. I mean, Helms Bells, you talk about dedication to lightness, you know, make yeah. something new. Yeah. Not at all, boy. These guys were into it way back in the early part of the century. Looks like you have some of the original name boards. Yeah. This is the original name board. And, you know, there's nothing on this boat more valuable and more important to me than this, this plate. And, uh, I mean, I would just love to be able to take this thing off and put it over something some forever. But no way am I going to do it. So stay I mean, I started ice building at eight years old when I was eight years old. So in a sense, I've been doing it for 50 years. And the boat was around now, yeah, right? To me, this boat was dying, and I, uh, yeah. I couldn't uh, stand to see that happen. And, and thank God I had the wherewithal all the money to, uh, to, to uh, save it. I have the yeah. interest of fixing them. This is where the plank goes, and uh, the plank is fashioned conventionally with uh, scraps similar to this, only they're humongous. And then there are big brass castings, in, which I salvaged from the old plank, they go down underneath and then some cross pieces. So just uh, putting these two main frames together is uh, it's not a matter of a couple of bolts and a lock nut. <laughs> How long does it take you to actually from on the ice to sailing? Um, we got better. Bob Dirk and I, my buddy who's now dead, and Bob sailed with me, and that's one of the probably one of the reasons I. Last time I sailed, my, my son was sailed with But Bob and I got so we could set the boat up in about three hours below, just the two of us. Uh, uh, I think that's a bit actually. We said we'd done it in three, but I think it was more like three and a half. And we knock it down in three and a half. And knocking it down was always harder than setting it up. And the reason was is because nobody was there to help us set it up. But everybody was there to help us knock it down. You say, well, it would take less time with all that help. Well, bullshit. Oh, well, mass confusion. Yeah, mass confusion. Right, you're running around making sure you got all the parts put back and all this stuff. And this trailer was uh, originally was a trailer that was used for a little Coast Guard surf boat that uh, my dad had for years, Fingerbilt, uh, Robo. You know, so it's one of the old original surf boats, big bronze manholes in it, and all those things. And we took that up a number of times up to Canada, they did it on and camping with it and all. And uh, we converted that into a sailboat that I no longer had a need for it. I didn't have any way of hauling the Deborah, so he very quietly put this together for me and, and the dev uh, uh, you know, to be the present. What, what is the future of the dev? What, what are the, all the possibilities for a lot of movement? Well, I, well uh, we're going to move up. Actually, uh, Bob Table talked to me and told me that Mystic Seaport might, might be interested in it. I don't know if they are or not because I had no direct communication with them. Um, and so this may very well be a promotion of uh, Bob's. Uh, I'm not sure. But it's certainly a worthy one. Oh yes, uh, so uh, it would be worthy. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to be retiring here uh, shortly. Just I've announced my intention to do so. This is my final replacement. I'm going. And that will, that will give me some time to uh, give some thought about what I want to do with my time. Uh, you know, uh, right now, uh, my business and all those things take the front of my mind. I was down at uh, Madison just last week. Yeah, well, a bunch of stern steers there, and normally I would be as excited as punch uh, about being around them, but, uh, you know, the, the, the pressing problems of business kind of have a way of dampening it. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that uh, when I can get back and ease off a little bit, that uh, some of that old vigor will come back and interest. Uh, and I'd like to say we're maybe for a year or more. Whatever I do with it, and uh, in fact, there's an individual just talked to me last week, and buying it at one time, point in time, uh, and he reapproached me on it and offered to help in any way he can if I took it down to Winnebago. Maybe that's something I'll do with it. It sounds like very good. If I took it down to Winnebago, the way I got it figured out, in retirement, I would have, you know, if I wanted to plug into that once in a while, I'd probably have another month to make a sale on it. Oh, yes. Because, uh, you know, I think you're going to get ice there two weeks longer there, and uh, and it freezes and patches like the May does. And, uh, Quite frankly, uh, while you got a seam across there, it's not as bad as the seam we have out here. Well, I'd say me, that's why I never like crossing the seam with this thing because I'll tell you, if you ever put it in, not a problem. <laughs> I dropped, by the way, I put it through once. 
Yeah, I put her through off of uh, Ennis Park, and it, it, uh, when she went through, the runner went down, and the air cushioned the sail, it came down just about like this. A little faster than that. The, rig, the whole plank was part of it. I stepped out of one side to cockpit. I couldn't find my friend. He was down there swimming in the water. I couldn't figure out what the hell happened to him. I didn't even get wet. And it was, we proceeded to take the sail off, put some dead men in. The next morning, we knocked her back on the ice and got her on. I, I was very worried about uh, water getting inside of her and all that. So I immediately, uh, since we got her off, this man went to put it in the warm shop and kept it there for about a month. And all the water was out of it. She didn't get much into it. Uh, the story here is uh, um, I mean, it could be a much older story than I know. The story could go back before me. But the punchline is that uh, she developed the crack. But I, uh, we spun out on her and uh, we got her back, and she decided she was going to go into some very rough ice. Off, off the comedy, and she did. And the process of doing that with uh, myself and the two small sons, so I say the four of us probably uh, maybe weighed about 400 pounds or whatever. Uh, and then it was enough. I don't know if her, because the frames were broken before that or what, but it was enough to split. Well, I did a cosmetic job and just, just shot some epoxy. And, on the crack and was hoping that the bulkhead was gone. And we set it up maybe five years after that and uh, I was pushing with the car and the car with the wheels was skipping, skipping a little bit so I backed up and gave her a little extra pump to break her loose and I broke the, <laughs> the crack right alongside the old crack. So uh, this has been on my mind for about seven years now and I finally just decided to take it out. But what we did was just took the side sideboard off and, and the bulkheads were about an inch and inch thick made out of three pieces of, uh, of, of three eighths inch of spruce cross glued like like plywood and uh and they were about this far apart and that's it now they had cleats in the corner so long stairs and uh i thought well this thing is under design anyway right we start with the whole thing here. so what i did is i did a lattice work on it i i put uh Launch them, uh, two of them diagonals, the bulkhead, the bulkhead, and I cleaned all of each of the bulkheads along both sides. Some people come to me to go hole and shoot some epoxy resin all the way around, and I declined to do that because uh, it is hot glue, casein glue, and uh, I mean I don't want to risk that joint. And you're going to put you're going to put some epoxy in there. The only other solution would have been to uh, maybe not the bulkheads, and quite frankly. As I stand here talking, this is the only wooden member left of the original boat. So it's worth the effort to salvage it just for that reason. I mean, it's very correct. Someday it's going to be gone, but, uh, but it's still around now, and who knows, 1911 or 20, 2011? 2011. 20, 2011. Maybe the boat will still around. And, and, uh, and, and thanks to your work here today, I'm not taking pictures and all, and developing a little history through these Cassis first year so uh, we can preserve some of the folklore of, uh, of ice building and, you know, it's, and I, it's, for me it's really just to be a part of it because one of the first ones I had in my life was sitting on a sled with a whole big city. That's where it all starts. It's it's been. Been. Okay, if there's nothing else, Roger, I'd like to thank you very much Thanks, for this. Thanks, Mike. Hope to see you come, yeah. Right, and I uh, hope I get to go back to Oshkosh uh, Maybe not this year, but next year. Okay, thank you.